Hey, I'm Patrick Sweeney. Welcome to Live Big. I'm in Turner, Maine, where they invented the toothbrush. Because if it was invented anyplace else, it'd be called the teeth brush. Tell that one to your kids. This is one of the few places in the United States where you can get a seaplane rating. I got mine here three years ago, and I'm coming back in some nasty crosswinds to see some amazing foliage and try my hand at landing and taking off on some of these beautiful Maine waters. And in general, living big. Hey. Bill Doris from Twitchells. Bill, nice to see you. What do we got going today? Well, I think we're going to try to do a little float flying this afternoon. It's a little windy out there, but I, I think we can handle it. So I'm, I'm nervous. I, it's been three years since I've, <laughs> since I've flown, so you can imagine I'm a little bit nervous. And uh, the crosswinds, when I flew, it was a beautiful, calm day. And when we were just looking at, uh, at the windsock and everything else, it's, it's blowing pretty good out there. What's, uh, wh wh what are we going to do to fix that? Well, it's, it's pretty much the same as you would on dry land. Yeah. You're going to hold your aileron into the wind and a little bit opposite rudder and just try to keep the airplane straight on the water and carry on. And, and that's so, really it. So then, on dry land, if you screw up, you, you, you go a little bit off the runway. What happens in the water if you screw it up? You go a little bit sideways on the water, but not, not so much. If, if you, just, you just learn to fly a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Learn to fly the hard it's, way. It's, Bill, a little bit, it's a little bit more forgiving. <laughs> okay, quickly, and know. and so uh, what kind of plane were we flying today? Well, you're going to be flying a regular Cessna 172 in model. Okay, and this it it has a little little 150 horse engine in it. And, and so it's the same plane I think I got my certification on a few years right. ago and and did the test on. Yeah. I think it's older than you and me put together. <laughs> it probably is. It no, it's probably. 73, 74, somewhere around here. Well, it might even be a 78. I don't know. Control speed. <laughs> well, and float plane pilots are about the rarest pilots that you can find as well. Uh, I know it's a lot less than private pilots and commercial pilots as well, but it sure as heck is uh, about the most fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's go fly. Okay. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, there's a couple reasons you want to do that. You want to get the extra weight out of the aircraft for one thing yeah <laughs> i mean if, if you have too much weight on one side of the airplane versus the other side the aircraft is going to list and it if it gets too full it could sink on one side and that would be bad <laughs> you think <laughs> that would be bad as soon as we shove off the dock i've got to jump in and get that engine started no time to buckle up or close the doors because we've got to get power to the rudder yep. so we can maintain control of the aircraft okay Okay. Bill's just going to hop onto one of the floats and coach me as we go along. Okay, clear. Uh, where's the, this is the master, right? Flying a float plane is all about touch. You've got to get a good feel for when the floats get up on a plane and when they break away from that cavitation of the water. Sometimes you have to wiggle the wing from side to side to get one float off first. But once they get off, it's smooth sailing. The only thing you have to look out for is the trees because they always climb faster than the plane does.
This truly takes me back to my roots. I used to be afraid of flying. Now it's one of my most fun and useful hobbies. Flying a seaplane really puts the adventure back in aviation. For me, even acrobatics have a more controlled, precise feel. Flying on floats is all about feel and judgment as you pick out a suitable body of water to set down your craft. There are no instrument approaches or landing aids, and most times, there's no margin for error. The biggest surprise for me when I learned to fly a float plane was that landing was so difficult when the water's glassy. If you think about it, it's just like a mirror, so you don't have any depth perception. You have to set your rate of descent and just trust that the plane's gonna come down softly on the water. And then, when it touches down, you can start to pull back the power. Always keep your nose up so you don't flip over, though. The Sea Pilots Association is a great place to get started and learn where you can take lessons or rent a plane. You only have to be 15 years old to solo and 16 to get your license. I wish I knew that a few years ago. Thank you so much for tuning in to Live Big. I hope you had as much fun on this episode as I did out flying it. What a blast it was today. Well, now's the time I give you the Sweeney core ideology. For me, with flying, it could be any one of my core ideologies that really apply. If you remember, I've talked about it before, I got into flying all because I was terrified to fly. When I was a five-year-old kid, I pitched such a fit in the airport, my parents had to leave the airport and actually drive from Boston to Georgia. I still hear about that one. <laughs> it's really an amazing day. So flying a seaplane at peak foliage season in the middle of Maine, it's tough to get better than this. It was a super day, I really had a lot of fun, and I would say the core takeaway is remember your roots. If you've got a fear, face it head on, and then you may end up opening up a whole new world like it did for me, and you'll look back and you'll say, wow, tough to believe I waited so long to do that. I hope you enjoyed the show today. If you did, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. You'll get a new adventure every week. Make sure you follow us on social media as well. And until next time, I'm Patrick Sweeney. Live big.